Hi. Well, you're looking at a 10th century Viking sword, kind of a classic Viking design. So it's a good example of the form overall, but it's also an opulent specimen. Like this was somebody who had some, uh, some change in their pocket that got this made. In fact, the literature accompanying it said it might have been held by a, or owned by a Viking chieftain or Frankish nobleman, which raises the point that yeah, just because it's a Viking sword, quote-unquote, doesn't mean it was actually used or held by a Viking. And that might seem odd to some people, but that kind of thing could happen, you know? Weapons got, tr there was trade, right? And that included weapons. Japan, you know, at one point exported a lot of swords to China, a lot of katanas. Well, you don't think of katanas being used in China, do you? But back to the sword itself. It's a cut and thrust blade, one-handed, you know, not very different from many other medieval swords of the time. But it's the pommel that really is the hallmark here. I'm no expert on historical European martial arts, but the second I saw this pommel, as soon as I walked up to it, I said Viking sword. So let's take a look in detail. It's gorgeous. Uh, you're looking at copper, silver, and other materials, and, you know, a lot of work went into this. But it looked absolutely amazing when it was new. Luckily, it's held up uh, much better than the blade, as we'll see in a second. But first, you can see how the visual motif is carried forward on the hilt, right? Matches. And here in this next angle, you're going to get to see the underside of it. It's kind of a rare view, you see that? And it carries through the design. Now, looking at the whole sword, this is 38 inches, basically, long with a 32-inch blade, and weighs just a little over 2 pounds. Because even if you're a big, strong Viking, uh, a weapon that's too heavy is not going to do you much good on the battlefield. Speaking of being built for battle, this is a pattern-welded blade, right? The classic Scandinavian Viking method. So just imagine rods of metal being kind of intertwined, twisted together, and then pounded so that they form one blade. And lastly, you can't really talk about Vikings without talking about sailing, so this is a shot I took in Norway with my back to a site that held an actual Viking hall back during the age of the Vikings, which was the 9th to 11th century, roughly, by the way. So I think it's safe to say some Viking ships, or many, uh, sailed across these very waters. And maybe a chieftain on board held a sword very much like the one we just saw. Thank you.